How do you build a healthy relationship with social media? Now wait, before you click off thinking that this is just gonna be another video that talks all about how social media is toxic and bad for you and you need to delete it, I have a different take on this. You see, social media is not inherently bad. It's the way that we interact with it that determines our experience. And if it's here to stay, then we should learn to deal with it in a healthy way. So in this video, I'm gonna share seven super practical tips and a mindset that I use daily to maintain a healthy relationship with social media. Oh, I need water. Wait. Let me get water. Stay hydrated, y'all. Okay, let's do this. The main mindset is this. Set boundaries. Like any healthy relationship, it starts with setting clear boundaries. And yes, boundaries with our time, which we'll get to in a little bit, but also boundaries with our psyche. We need to ask ourselves the question, what kind of energy do I want in my life? Do I want to be fired up and outraged, or do I want peace? Do I want comparison, competition, or do I want contentment? This first mindset habit is all about setting up a healthy, uplifting environment for yourself at all costs. So that means if somebody's constantly spewing negativity, then you have every right to distance yourself. It's like right now, mid-pandemic, if your homie's coughing up a whole ass storm, you are not obligated to stand next to them just to be nice. Socially distance, yo. The same applies here. We have to learn how to socially distance on social media. And practically what this means is unfollowing and muting a whole bunch of people. Now I can already hear you saying, but what if I see them again in person? Oh my God, it's gonna be so awkward. What are they gonna think of me? Are they gonna start beef? I don't wanna start nothing. I don't want no drama. Look, I'm gonna be real with you. You are not obligated to consume anybody's negativity just because you have history. You are not obligated to consume anybody's negativity just because you have history. And honestly, the people who turn weird or start beef, even if you're being perfectly nice to them in person, they weren't real ones anyways. Facebook story by Frank Ocean, my king, illustrates this perfectly. And as I mentioned in my video about dropping out, the opinions of others are just that, an opinion. And they can't hurt you or stop you in any real way. You're still safe you're still here. That being said, I get it. It's awkward. I've been through situations where someone literally came up to me and asked me, yo, why do you not follow me anymore? I get it. It's hard. How do you not care what people think? But something that really helps me get over that fear are the following questions. What's the worst that could happen? Okay, you see them in person, they ask you, why don't you follow me back? Okay. And now on the flip side, what is there to gain? A clear psyche, uplifting positive environment, you're getting rid of toxicity and negativity, your head is a lot clearer, you're happier. Let's think of it like this. The price to pay for your happiness and your well-being is an awkward encounter here or there. That's a pretty good deal if you tell me. <laughs> now, of course, you don't always have to unfollow or unfriend people, you can just mute them. And I'm so glad that Instagram inserted that feature. You know, if it's like a work connection or a professional thing, but you don't like the energy that they're spreading on social media, then mute them. Here's an exercise. Exercise? Is this even an exercise? I don't know, something that you can try. As you scroll through your feed, I want you to be very present and very aware of how you feel. And as you do with each post that you scroll through, I want you to ask yourself, how is this making me feel? Is this contributing to my well-being? Or as one certain lovable Japanese woman says, does this spark joy? Yes, you're basically gonna be going Marie Kondo on your whole life. And if the answer isn't a hell yes, then it should be the most confident hell no. So now that we've established a healthy, uplifting environment by setting clear boundaries on our energy, we can now start to set boundaries on our time. But before we do, we need to understand what we're working with. Social media is intentionally designed to be addicting. Here's an explanation from my previous video. It's the exact same mechanism as a slot machine. Look at this, okay? So I'm gonna open up Instagram. Okay, so on the explore feed right now, and yes, your boy's a meme lord. So I'm gonna swipe down to refresh, it clicks, makes you wait, and then delivers new stimuli. And novelty releases dopamine in the brain. Every time you swipe down to refresh, new stimuli, more dopamine in the brain. It's a habit loop that keeps you going. And with TikTok or IG Reels, it's the same reason why they don't auto scroll for you. They want you to swipe so that you create a habit loop. You swipe, new stimuli. You swipe, new stimuli. Releases dopamine, creates a habit. But like any other addiction, there's a way to fight it. So here are seven super, here are some super practical tips that I use every single day. Number four is my secret sauce. Tip number one is so, so simple. Turn your notifications off. When you want to check social media, 
Check it on your time, not when it tells you. Tip number two is also simple, bury the app. I hide my problem social media apps, literally just Instagram, on the last page of my phone inside of a folder where it's the last item. It makes it so inconvenient to scroll to that I just don't. Tip number three, empower your explore page. One way to reset your feed on Instagram is to find one truly uplifting post on your explore feed and then swipe down. And as you do, like every single suggestion that it brings up. It signals to the IG algorithm that that's the type of content that you're looking for. And the more that you consume that, it creates a snowball, which leads to more uplifting, empowering content being fed to you. Tip number four, set your intentions. So earlier, remember how I said that it's designed like a slot machine? Well, there's a way to psychologically bypass that. Usually what happens when you open up Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok is that it'll show you the logo, make you wait a little while, and then show you the feed. That anticipation is what makes opening the app so habitual and so addictive. So what I do when I open up Instagram is that I tap the app, <laughs> cover my screen for 10 seconds, and I set my intention. I ask myself, okay, why am I opening up Insta? Okay, I'm just here to check DMs. I'm just here to reply to the comments on my last post and then I'm done. Okay, cool, sounds good. And then you go. What this does is that it interrupts the habitual checking and mindless scrolling and buys you time to set your intention. It puts the power back in your hands. You consume what you want to, not what the app tells you to. But when you're on the app, it takes a lot of focus and mental discipline not to fall back into distraction land. And to tell you the truth, I'm not perfect by any means. I still fall into my mindless scrolling ruts from time to time. If I'm on YouTube at like 2 a.m. looking at a video like, why do things keep evolving into crabs? Hey, it's a good video. But I can say that for the most part, this habit alone has a massively, massively helped my social media consumption. Tip number five, set a time limit. Before I go onto any social media app, I set a timer for X amount of minutes. And if you're as lazy as I am, you can literally just use Siri if you have an iPhone. Hey Siri, set a timer for five minutes. Your timer is set for five minutes. On Instagram, you can also go into your settings and have them send you a reminder once you've reached your daily limit. Just go to settings, your activity, time, set daily reminder. And if you have an iPhone, you can also use screen time restrictions to literally just block the app once you've reached your time limit. And if you have a real problem with compulsive checking, I would suggest giving your screen time password or something to a friend or trusted family member. I did that back in October, 2019, because I just kept on checking and checking and checking. I needed it. Tip number six, reward yourself. Now this is a habit that I mentioned back in my dropout video, but basically I like to schedule out my breaks or my social media time so that my brain has something to look forward to. I know that I can delay the gratification of checking Reddit now because I know it'll be a lot more fun later when I actually have the time. I'll feel better about myself too because I'm sticking to my schedule and I get to scroll guilt free. Tip number seven, desktop distance. If you find that having an app on your phone is just way too enticing, I would suggest deleting it off of there and just checking it on your desktop instead. I do this with Instagram all the time. I only download the app if I have something to post or if I have something to say. And if I don't have anything to say, then I just check it on my laptop. Now this is a point that I said that this video wouldn't be about, but it bears mentioning. If you still find that your social media usage is hard to manage even with this mindset and all these practices, it might be beneficial to take a break for 30 to 90 days. And that's not a number that I'm just pulling out of thin air. Studies have shown that dopamine receptors in the brain typically take anywhere from 30 to 90 days to begin recovery from an addictive pattern. So if a healthy relationship with social media isn't possible for you just yet, I would highly recommend taking that break and giving yourself that distance. I personally took four social media breaks in 2020 and it gave me so much clarity and peace. So if you're looking for advice on quitting social media and how I did it, you can check out this video right here where I talk all about how quitting TikTok changed my life. All that being said, I'll see you next time. Peace and love.